regulators have seized Silicon Valley Bank in the largest bank failure since the Great Recession. Customers were rushing to take their money out. Get the money out. There um, are recent developments that concern a few banks. So the Silicon Valley bank crisis is being called one of the biggest banking failures in U.S. since 2008 and possibly the second biggest banking failures in U.S. history. Across social media, there is a lot of hue and cry and there is panic all across. And there are so many rumors going around about doomsday, about the venture ecosystem completely collapsing and whatnot. In this video, we are going to understand what happened why it happened and why it is not that much of a big deal let's go so before we get down to what happened let's try and understand what silicon valley bank is well it's a bank if that's all that it is it's a bank in the united states in the silicon valley that is in california and because it was in silicon valley majority of the venture backed firms including the vcs had their bank accounts in this bank in fact more than 50 percent of all venture backed startups had bank accounts in silicon valley bank this is also probably because of the herd mentality of the different entrepreneurs who are there in silicon valley that if one entrepreneur has a bank account in a certain bank others ask hey which bank should I open up my bank account in? They would refer them to the bank which they already were working with. And that is the reason why probably all the companies from Y Combinator, all the different companies from different VC firms who had their bank accounts in Silicon Valley Bank basically asked them to open up their bank accounts in Silicon Valley Bank. And so much so that at one given point of time, more than 50% of all the bank accounts in Silicon Valley Bank were of private equity, venture capital and startups backed by them. And this was also one of the major reasons of its downfall. We'll come to that a little bit later. So what really happened? Well, the shorter version is that it was a simple and a classic case of a bank run. You know, everybody going to the bank to withdraw money at the same time and then the banks basically ran out of money. But let's try and understand why it happened and how it happened. How does a bank make money? A bank basically takes the money of its depositors and then invests it and makes returns out of it. In this case, Silicon Valley Bank had invested in long-term security bonds of the US government. The bonds are usually a very credible form of assets to be held. So it was in some ways a very good investment and a very safe bet. Now you need to understand that when Silicon Valley Bank had bought these bonds, the interest rates in US were at their all time low, almost a 0 to 1% of an interest rate. Now you need to understand one thing about the bond market is that when the interest rates are low, the value of the bonds are high. And when the interest rates are high, the value of the bonds are low. So it is inversely proportional. So I'm keeping things very, very basic. And if you want to go into more details, you will always find literature on the internet. So what basically happened is because of the funding winter which was coming in, the startups which were holding their bank accounts in Silicon Valley, Valley Bank basically started to withdraw money because they did not have enough capital or cash flows to rely on and they were not raising a lot of newer funds. Because of this, the bank started to feel a crunch and they started to run low on liquidity. So much so that on March of 8th, SVB's parent company, SVB Financial Group, said that it would undertake a 2.25 billion share sale after selling 21 billion dollars worth of securities from its portfolio at a nearly 2 billion dollar loss. Now this loss basically happened because the value of the bonds that they were selling had were now much much lower than the rates at which they had basically bought. Now when this news hit the market 
this led to a huge drop in the share price of svb and almost wiped out 80 billion dollars worth of money from the share market this created a lot of panic and trades of the shares were stopped now this news basically spooked the investors and the venture capital firms and they basically asked the companies in their portfolios to start withdrawing money from svb bank as soon as they could now these included investors like peter thiel and union square ventures and as i said the demise was primarily because of an old-fashioned bank run this time around this was not the people but the startups and the vcs who were basically withdrawing money from silicon valley bank and just to give you a little bit of an idea about the volume on one day 42 billion dollars worth of money was withdrawn from silicon valley bank and this is primarily the reason why the bank collapsed within 48 hours now the question here is why did the bank fail so spectacularly and so fast now this is primarily because of the non-diversification of their portfolio more than 50 percent of the clients in the portfolio of svb were startups and crypto companies and this meant when the venture capital and the private equity ecosystem was doing really well even the banks were doing really really well but when this one ecosystem started to go down even the banks who had a major major exposure to the risks involved in this specific sector basically led to the downfall now the question here is what happens now well very frankly all the doomsday news and all the panic that you see in the ecosystem might not really be true because number one the svb bank was not really catering to the normal audience they were primarily catering to companies and businesses and that to venture back once so the scope of contagion is fairly limited we would not see uh, the effect of contagion spreading to a lot of other sectors or other banks although there might be a little bit of panic in the market because of the news but this might actually be very very short term and you might see the market bouncing back up except for the clients who had or the companies and the shareholders who had direct exposure to svb now in terms of the startups and companies which were a part of this svb saga as in the ones who already had either accounts in svb or ones who had invested in svb the amount of assets which svb had is close to around 80 to 100 billion dollars which is more than enough to cover majority of the deposits which were there in silicon valley bank now the interesting part is the fdic in short plan which basically gives a guarantee to the depositors that the money will be returned to them by as soon as early next week now 95 percent of the companies which were a part of the portfolio might not be able to come under this fdic insurance plan it's because number one a lot of the accounts were foreign deposit holders and number two the fdic insurance plan only covers commercial accounts of up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars now given that majority of these accounts are from silicon valley firms the numbers are, or, or the amount in the deposits were much much higher hence they were probably not be insured so probably the money will not be returned to them that fast but the money will be returned eventually what's the major takeaway um, well number one i don't think you could have done anything better or no you you i mean there's nothing that you could have done to really uh, safeguard yourself from something like this a lot of people might actually say that you should have had multiple bank accounts um, and which is also true a lot of people usually have multiple bank accounts 
but the way usually the division is done is each bank account has a specific purpose so one bank account is used for payroll one bank account is used to run marketing one bank role is used to do supply chain or stuff like that uh, and while yes i think having multiple uh, bank accounts might actually have had safeguarded the companies from 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 this kind of a scenario but uh, i don't think anybody would have any foresight that something like this would have happened you usually account for buffer cases in terms of uh, things going wrong but this is something which is like an act of god you really don't know uh, that something like this could have happened and it's just a matter of luck a matter of chance that you had a bank account in a company in a bank like svb um and yeah and that's primarily it so i think i hope this video kind of helps you understand what basically happened in in silicon valley bank in a very very laymanish term in a very basic terms and hopefully also helps you understand why this is not that much or that big of an issue as well hopefully this video would have been of some value so please like share and subscribe and we are also running a small giveaway like subscribe and share this video by tagging the builders club social in any of our social media handles you basically get 500 rupees worth of amazon voucher so please please share this video as well and hopefully we'll see you guys in the next video upwards and onwards Practices out.